Welcome to CS with Daniel. In this video, I will give an overview of CS with Daniel, and I will also show how to install Java. So, what is CS with Daniel? CS with Daniel is a set of Java curriculum split up into four levels, and basically, when you finish the four levels, you'll have everything needed to take the AP Computer Science A exam in terms of material. The only materials needed to finish CS with Daniel are the video lessons, problem sets on the GitHub, and a computer, obviously. So no textbooks or other materials are really necessary. So first, who should learn from CS with Daniel? Students are strongly recommended to learn at least Algebra 1, since basic mathematical foundation helps with programming a lot. Like, if you don't understand like some concepts of Algebra 1, you may also find some programming concepts to be even more challenging. And students should be able to watch the videos, do the problem sets, and compare with the available solutions of the problem sets. And students should fully attempt problem sets before viewing the solutions, because if you view the solutions, that takes away the majority of the benefit of doing the problem sets, it, unless you do the problem sets first. After viewing the solutions, st students are also strongly encouraged to understand and correct any mistakes. That's the purpose of viewing the solutions, so that you could actually grow from them. Sometimes, some of the problem sets, like problems in the problem sets, are programming problems, and in that case, it might not be as easy to see if you're correct or not, and at least compare with the solutions to the problem sets when possible, and try to see if your solution is correct. So first, why Java over other programming languages? So Java is the most popular programming language because it can run on nearly any system. It's used in the AP Computer Science A exam, if you want that. And it's used to make many games and stuff. It's relatively easy to learn and debug and runs reasonably fast. And well, when compared to other programming languages, C++ is faster, but it's harder to learn and debug. Python is also easy to learn, but it's slower than Java and sometimes harder to debug. And it's sometimes too slow for programming competitions. And also, it doesn't matter as much what programming language you learn first, because it's significantly easier to learn a second programming language than it is to learn the first. After learning Java, you can learn C++ much faster and learn Python much faster and other languages similarly. So why CS with Daniel specifically? Well, it's taught by a high school student making programming seem accessible to middle and high school students. And it has problem sets and solutions for each video. It contains organized curriculum which can be used to self-study or teach, and it's free. So how much time should you expect to spend? So there's four levels in total. Each level has four lessons, so there's a total of 16 lessons, where each lesson has around three lesson parts. So each level contains around 12 lesson parts, which means a total of 48 lesson parts in four levels. And each lesson part has 10 to 20 minutes in level one and 15 to 30 minutes in levels two to four in video lessons and also has a problem set to go along with it, except for maybe the review lesson parts. And each problem set, if you have no programming experience, should take on average 45 to 90 minutes. Although students with a strong programming background or mathematical background may spend less time. And this curriculum is designed to help students self-study and you can also teach others with this curriculum. So what should you expect after finishing the curriculum? So after finishing all four levels, students will have learned all the material needed to take the AP Computer Science A exam. It will also cover some additional material not covered by the AP Computer Science A exam that may be useful for say competitions, college courses, and just straight up programming normally and the levels are like curriculum basically is not the, entirely designed for the ap computer science a exam so 
for example, there's no AP style exercises. It's rather designed to give students a solid programming foundation for the future. And it just happens that the AP material is mostly needed for the solid programming foundation. What will each of the four levels contain? Level one will basically contain more fundamental stuff that is definitely needed for every programmer. Even if you're not using Java, you can you still need the fundamental concepts covered in level one. Level two requires level one concepts and also builds upon them and has additional concepts that you'll definitely need to, in order to program. Level three contains some slightly more advanced concepts, which are also heavily emphasized on the AP exam, but also useful in programming. It may not be as useful in, say, programming competitions, but level three is also useful for like more advanced programming, larger scale projects, and also like say college courses. And then level four covers some additional materials that a lot of it is not covered in the AP computer science exam, although some are. And like level four is very useful in terms of say actual like programming because it contains many useful concepts and items that are useful in Java in general. So it'll be useful for programming in general. It can also be used for programming competitions and later college courses in the future. You're free to use any of the material in CS with Daniel as long as credit is given. And I already have four former students that are using this curriculum to teach Java. Two of them have already taught all four levels of Java. And basically teaching can like help because well sometimes students especially younger ones may not have the discipline to watch the videos do the problem sets and compare with the available solutions independently so doing it in a classroom setting may help so yeah you're free to use any of this curriculum all of this information can be found on my github page basically in this URL. You can also find in this, in my GitHub over here, the problem sets. So organized by level and then each level is organized into lessons, parts, and then there's problems and solutions. In particular, credit for the solutions to the problem sets in levels two through four, go to Ryan Wu, one of my four former students now teaching Java that I mentioned earlier. Ryan Wu has independently taught all four levels of Java and has also made solutions and videos to the solutions for levels two through four. Now I will show how to install Java and set up a Java environment. So first, go to the official Java download site page and there's many Java versions. There's 16 so far, 11, eight, and so on. There's not that many crucial features from eight to say 16. So I'll just download Java eight as it's compatible with the environment I'm going to be using. So make sure you download the JDK as if you download say the JRE, you'll only be able to run Java you want to be able to also program in Java, so you want the JDK. So make sure you download the Java JDK, download the proper file, depending on what operating system you're using. So for example, this is a Mac, so then therefore I'll download the Mac version. Now, unfortunately, you need an Oracle account for this. Previously, you didn't need that, although creating one is not that hard. All you need is an email address, a password, um, 
um, a country, a name, a job title, a, a work phone. Um, you don't actually have to make a real work phone, nor do you actually need a company name in like really like you can just fill these fields out select the state put some put a five digit number maybe your zip code if you want and then make the account and you'll need to verify it with your email so you basically go to this email the verify your email address and then you click on the verify and then you continue and then you're ready. So now all you have to do is go back to the, the downloads page right here and then download the proper file. And well, you also have to accept their license agreement, which you can read on your own time. And after you've reviewed and accepted the license agreement, you can just download or actually first sign in with your newly created account if you're not logged in yet. And after you sign in, it'll download. It's 207 megabytes on here around that size so make sure you at least have that size it's not that big after it takes a while to download you'll get this file which then will help you install Java and basically you'll, you'll first need to open the file it may be different on different operating systems but once you get this thing open everything will be good. It'll take an additional 557 around that much space on the computer. So yeah, that's not that much space, assuming you don't have your computer filled with junk. So yeah, install, you'll on some computers need an administrator's password. And then it'll install for you. And then afterwards, it'll say the installation was completed successfully. And then you can just move the installer to the trash because you don't need it. Now, having Java installed doesn't mean you have a good Java environment. Generally, you want to have a good Java IDE because editing Java with text editor or something like that can be really bad because you don't have a good visual on the code. So therefore, you first, I guess, go to find the Java IDE. And uh, the videos here will just use Dr. Java because of its simplistic nature. So just for Dr. Java, just download and then you'll be fine. It's a jar file, which means it runs on Java. Um, it'll say it can harm your computer, but it's not going to harm your computer. Then afterward, you open the file and sometimes it'll say it's from some unidentified developer and like you can't open it. So to bypass that, you need to sometimes do right click and then open rather than double click to open. And then you open and then it'll work. There we go. We have a working Java environment. So now We can compile, we can run, of course, not now because there's no functional program, but basically now we have a good Java environment that we can run on. Now, in case you can't get the Java environment to work at all, you can use something called an online Java compiler, which will do the job for you. So basically something like this, this is an example of one you can search for more online and basically it'll be able to run functional java 
or like completely functional Java with basically all the features. Now there are some limitations to this thing though. For one, sometimes it may have slight like glitches occasionally, although you can just run it, run the program again if you suspect there's a glitch. It'll be really obvious when there's a glitch. And another thing is you can't like read from files or something like that. During the file input and output section, you'll just have to trust your code. So you can't open the file to verify that it works when you write to a file because it's an online Java compiler. So you can't see it on your system. But otherwise, everything would work on this online Java compiler, including user input. So with the interactive mode. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to run like an entire Java game or something like that on this online Java compiler. We're not going that far in these four levels. Another disadvantage of this online Java compiler, though, is that unless you make frequent backups, you can lose your code easily. Like if you reload, I mean, sometimes it asks if you want to reload the site, but you can accidentally close it. Your browser can crash basically, and you lose all your code unless you have a backup of it. So that's the problem. You don't really have a local environment either, which sometimes may be bad. Although if you just want to quickly run some small section of code, you can use this even if you have a local environment, because this thing is simpler, except it's just less reliable overall.